in profound states. Tonight we have a very special guest. Her name is Stone Hobbit. She is a multifaceted uh, person with a diverse range of experiences and skills, born as an intuitive walk-in hybrid. Uh, she went from an abductee to a contactee. Now that, that's kind of odd. Has, she has embraced various roles such as uh, motivational speaker, author, radio, and screen host, and facilitates workshops. She's, she uh, draws from a wide array of innate knowings spiritual traditions, practices, and elements of shamanism. She shares accumulative, accumulated insights from personal encounters with ETs, uh, otherworldly phenomena, and spiritual dimensions. She has a unique approach to understanding and communicating with the energies that present themselves and assists others to connect with their higher authentic selves. Her webpage is www.stonehobbit.com. Welcome to tonight's show, Stone Hobbit. How are Thank you? Thank you. How are oh. you this morning in Australia? Well, I'm, New Zealand. I know. I'm, New Zealand. I'm in New Zealand, honey. New Zealand. <laughs> yep, Aotearoa. Um, it's a nice, cold, brisk day, and the mist is all over the hills, coming, creeping up to the house. I'm I'm fantastic, and um, looking forward to wherever this ends up going. Okay, well, <laughs> uh, since I started without my lighting properly set. Oh, look, you look like a shadow being on the planet Earth. <laughs> All right, now it's set. So, uh, we might as well jump right into it. So, what's the... Uh, very first odd thing that ever happened to you that you remember at the youngest age? Going for a walk. I, I didn't even know how long it took. I was in nappies material. Um, had no singlet or shirt or anything on, just a little toddler. I mean, like maybe two, if if that. And I was holding the hand of an elderly lady who was carrying what they used to call a carpet bag. Um, I recall a lot of people around the house when I got back, and they later on acknowledgement. They were police officers and neighborhood people who were out looking for a missing child. <laughs> That's pretty much my first memory I've never let go of because uh, there's news articles, there's family, and I, I felt like I I wasn't missing. I, I wasn't in any danger. Um, and going from A to B is actually – in a car it's about 10 15 minutes drive and I walked there so I don't have any concept of time whatsoever and this particular energy in the form of this elderly woman with the carpet bag came to me throughout my life after that each so, time each time I had missing time who was she in relation to you? I mean, what what uh, what happened? What actually happened? Were you in that situation? How did you get in that situation? I was a toddler. I don't know how I got in the situation. I just know that I went for a walk. I recognised the the location because that was my grandparents' home, and we would visit regularly to the point where I lived there for over a year and went to the school next door. The township that I went into also has a family connection name who was a captain of a ship, <laughs> and it just keeps going. So there's there's all these all these different linkages and connections. Um, I sat down one day when I started to write my books, and I found that I was mapping a specific journey with that individual and I couldn't see in the biological sense the DNA connection a relationship 
there was no ancestral feelings or anything of that sort. It was more of this is an incarnation of a life experience that I have lived myself. So I was being in um, the elderly person with the carpet bag in however she came and he came knocking on my door. Um, I realized that this energy was not the 3D earthbound energy. As, as I got older, through the different experiences that I was put into, I got to see the patterns early on, quick, you know, quick, like who, what, what entities, and in, in one age it was spiritual, next stage it was demonic, next stage it is multidimensional incarnations, energy forms coming back, um, messages all over the place of different forms of experiences, off-world, on-world, inner-world. It's, it's, there's so many, so many different spaces. There's no time. There's no time. And I feel like knowing that information, where I'm at now here on, in this amazing, amazing energy field, I'm having a breather. You're getting, a, you're finally able to relax a little bit. Yeah, being on Earth, once you get past all the programming, you can, and, and you see it how it really is, and know that your inner self having a symbiotic relationship with this vessel, which is a filter, which is absolutely amazing, and we're not taught this, we're not taught the fundamentals of the operation. We're not taught how to receive, how to feel the symptoms and receive the information and filter it. We're, we're, I see us all as multidimensional energies and each one of us is a frequency signature. You know, we can come into the human vessel um, one of the messages I got was, it doesn't matter the skin that you're in, okay? When you become conscious, you are never unconscious again because you transmutate the unawareness into the awareness field. And, yeah, there you go. So did you ever... Uh have a name for this elderly? No, no. Along this journey, it's never been about who's who, names, titles. It was, it was, um, there was, there was that division between all the entities and beings that I encountered, whether it was going, whatever the circumstances, okay? And I come from a very dark background. Whatever the circumstances arose, I could use that to differentiate between what is here in the now and what did what they did to the entities that were participants on another dimensional level. They were there as watchers and, and they knew the truth and, and all of this other stuff. So I was able to... And through the programming, MK Ultra and all of that, it was no names. It was yes sir, no sir, Mr. or Mrs., aunt or uncle. And that was what they used as the program to stop me from identifying certain certain things in my lifetime. Who did what, blah, blah, blah. You know, I couldn't put a name to the face. It had to be Mr. or Mrs. or yes, sir, no, sir, or uncle or auntie, okay? So when I got onto the spiritual side of us, I was able to see all these other dimensional beings and see over, over, over a space of time how they interacted with us on a normal every single day level 
and I'm talking parasitical entities, shadow beings coming in, plasma spheres turning into into light body forms, morphing into two of them, you know, and 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 all of these different abilities, the night terrors, the sleep paralysis, it's all different forms of one communication to dimensional, multi-dimensional forms of communication with energy imprints connected to it. So when I was communicating with these beings, all of these beings, I've had a couple come in and tell me, try to tell me their names and stuff, but there's no point because I'm not going to hold on to it because of the programming I've had. I, I recognize frequencies. I recognize imprints. When the greys came in and the first imprint they gave me was that it was my three-year-old son standing in the doorway. But because I also recognized the grey imprint frequency signature, it was boom. No, you're not the illusion that you just portrayed and tried me to tried to have me connect my emotionals emotions to. Because emotions are just basically plugins. And so I got to recognize the abilities of some of these different beings. I like to call them dimensionals because unless they're standing right in front of me and talking to me, they're not in, they're not my dimension. They're not my solidified dimension. So was this female elderly lady, was she ultimately a positive or negative? Uh, I, I can't say that there was ever any negative come from interaction with her um, or those of that frequency. No, they, they were like guides. They were almost protectors. So, so what they're protecting me from, I don't know. Do you know where she took you? Yes. <laughs> Go ahead. Tell, tell us. Go ahead. Okay. Um, in, in that first encounter, she took me to a township called Henderson. And we were living in a street, so you can look this up on the map. Um, it's in Auckland, West Auckland. It was Henderson. Um, and I was living on a street called Frank Evans Place. And that is on Swanson Road. And right next to it is a high school called Waitakere College. I ended up going to that college. Um, all that land and space and stuff in the early, early days was orchard and it was owned by my grandfather who was a minister of parliament here. And he ended up working for a facility called Friendship House. And back in the 60s and 70s, that was... Um, going to China and different Asian countries and making some sort of deal I'm not not aware of uh, to come as immigrants into New Zealand for housing, the whole works. Later on, I would actually find out. I was about 15, 16 when I found out. I walked into a meeting that they were having and... Um, yeah, there, there was a lot more that was revealed that day. So, sorry, I went off track. Throw another one at me. So, <laughs> uh, last night I, I interviewed Misha Johnston, and she was, um, she was, she went through a lot of the, she, she reminds me of you, or you remind me of her one way or the other. And she, um, has all the alien contacts, and but she also went through the MK Ultra as well, and she tied in uh, the CIA, Satanism, the aliens, the Draconians, uh, the sacrifices, and all that good. She tied it all together, which I've never heard quite done by anybody, and so um, how. Do you have a uh, an idea of a hierarchy of yeah. of all the forces that you've encountered? You know how they all fit together in some type of tapestry. Do you? 
I, I know Misha, and and that was that was a really good turnaround in the space that I knew her. I learned a new language, and that language was I didn't need to worry about the labels, the feeling states, or any of these other stuck states that we're programmed into, you know, falling into. Yes. Um, okay. In the early days when these entities showed themselves. I was programmed to believe they were ghosts, angels, and demons. When I got into my teens, they were different forms of entity. There were still the angels. There were still the demons, but they were different. They weren't what they were portrayed, what, what I perceived when I was younger. As I got older... I got to recognize these influence. They are influencing energies, whether we like to admit it or not, because we are in their um, energy fields, we will react in certain ways and we can be directed. We can, you know, I call it the chaos. It's, it's the chaos state. So much chaos going on in the mind that you don't know yourself. You don't get to know yourself is a cover-up of all these different areas. Um, I can go into maritime law, um, admiralty law, uh, law of the land, the common law, law. Oh, yes, chaos. Yep, yep, chaos, chaos theory, yep. No, it's... <laughs> Charles it's, Manson, yes. It's uh, chaos, Charles Manson, the CIA, and the secret history of the 60s. don't know if it's any good. I haven't got far too far into it yet yeah i i see these books and stuff and i hear little tidbits here and there but i don't read them um the only book that i've actually really read was iron mountain and i could relate to that in so many different ways over the years there's been little bits of information that have come in and shown me that, that you know they're all pieces of the puzzle okay you you come in you have your abilities and they are sheltered. It doesn't matter who you who you were, how bright your light. You know, the the brighter your light. This is something that's just come recently. Um, the the oops, you're right. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm fine. The, the brighter it. your light, the darker the shadows around you, literally. Um, and this includes those closest to you. Until you can learn all forms of languages, and I'm not, these are energy dimensional languages. I'm not talking the verbal because that's spell casting, that's Admiralty Maritime, and they use that against us. That's one of the biggest programs out there. We, everybody talks about understanding. Here's this, the first one you should all know What are you standing under? somebody else's mindset, somebody else's theory, somebody else's limited stuck states. Are you going to keep being in that stuck state yourself? Or are you going to step out and go, well, you know, where am I getting these voices coming from, this information? How do I know how to do this and this and this? Whether you learned it from your parent or elder, anybody around you, TV, whatever, it's a frequency of learning. So when you allow yourself to keep learning, learn a skill every month, learn a skill for your personal survival. Have a, have a key where if everything turned to custard tomorrow and all these beings that have been around us all this time suddenly show up, the population is not ready for what is right there with us all the time. Right? When you break out of that, that stigma and start communicating with the beings around you all the time, you take yourself to that next level. You take yourself to that higher conscious awareness of you. Okay. So and then you pick up, like for me, I have, let's say, A, B, C, and D coming in and communicating with me. I relate to their frequency so I can communicate with that frequency. Once I become aware of what it is that I'm communicating with, the communication because goes to the next level, and and this just it's never bloody ending. 
um, that the governments in my perception from where I've come from and all the organisations because of what I was what I experienced as a young child and all the way through the levels, when it got to the stage where I'm an adult parent, blah, 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 um, I'm now working with the government and the government is proving that they're not working for my best interest. They're not working for the best interest of people or this planet or anything that is actually living, okay? They see us as dead entities okay we are not humans we are souls so the government plays a really huge role in knowing exactly where we come from the different forms of dna that's inside us um latest i see if i can help the latest messages that have come in to me are we are of let's say angelic because I don't do religion, okay? I've seen it for what it is. It's just another another satanic ritual. I don't mean anybody any ill will. There is some good stuff in these different Bibles. If you can, you know, love thyself, get to know thyself, know thyself, you start treating you and your environment, which means any other living entity in that environment, in a totally different way. We are all connected. We are all reflections of self having an experience down here. It would be very boring if we all were of the same mindset, cloned and robots, but we're not. We have come from so many different sources to begin with that we have different DNA imprints. And with these different beings from these different multi-dimensions coming in, the more activity you have with one signature frequency is what you're going to end up interacting and seeing more of. It's like if I had a, a friend who comes from another country, say China, Asia, whatever, eventually I'm going to pick up their language, their belief systems. I'm going to bring it into my everyday life. You can do that without even having those sources available to you. You just got to think about it. There, there's, there's so much governmental manipulation, it's it's disgusting. So what, so. what was the first, uh, besides the lady, the older lady who came to you when you were youngest, kind of go through your life and, and hit on the next, what's the next thing that happened to you? Um, okay, well, before before that had happened, okay, let's, let's just do a quick brief. Um, I was born into a Catholic, Anglican family, uh, both sides, different, different sides. Uh, one practiced black magic. And one black practice and and you know Catholic side as well, and also the other side was born into and from a pedophile family, Masonic order, uh, center point order. The you know there's all these different little you know the darker side of stuff. When I came in, I came in a month premature. Um, I discovered from some of the memories of that and interacting 20 years later with the midwife that saved my life, who I had absolutely no idea who she was, but she knew me, was able to fill in some of the spaces, um, you know, and it came from a genuine source. I had no reason to believe anything different. Then I got into an age where I could go and I could start doing my own detective work on my journey because I had family members, relations, telling me A, B, and C, and I later discovered these, they were all involved in the program of it. You know, this might sound crazy when you think, okay, A, B, and C are against one, one entity, three against one. Well, who are you going to trust? You're going to trust the three. But when you look at it closer, you discover that A, B, and C all have different roles that they're playing 
to cover for each other. Uh, if you found out tomorrow that your brother or sister was a pedophile or child molester or murderer or whatever did the worst thing, what are you going to do? You're going to analyse whether you're going to protect them or whether you're going to go and, and hand them in. What is your safety barrier? Um, you got to see where you came from. Where, where Did you experience these things growing up? Is this ancestral? Is this a regular pattern? I, I had to step back and go, what did I live through? <laughs> Why did I live through it? Um, I grew up having different abilities. I was pre, um, yeah, precognitive. I could see accidents and in incidents happen before they happened. And I was maybe 14, 15 when I started realizing that these things are real. They really are happening around me. You know, they're not, it's not a dream. Um, I didn't have teachers telling me that the state that you're going into is a precognitive state. I wasn't told that what I was doing was remote viewing. There was no labels for the abilities and my everyday survival. These entities that came in, as soon as I started talking to any human about what I was seeing, no, you can't talk about that. Don't talk about that. That's that's dark magic. That's evil. Stop talking about that. But they were there. I could see them. I could see them. I was interacting with them. They weren't all evil. That was the concept. That was the program of if you saw a ghost or you saw something that wasn't normal, boom, you're going in the loony bin. Don't talk about that sort of stuff. You're going to get taken away from your family sort of stuff. So, so I. So you saw ghosts? Oh, mate, all my life. I There's the ghosts that I see. You have the energy forms that are looped. They won't interact with you. It's just an apparition in time, an energy that you're tapping into. Somehow you have a connection to it if you're seeing it. Then you get the ones that will interact with you. They are of, of the form that haven't moved on or have moved into the next dimension that we're still able to interact with. Is there one uh, event you had with a, a uh, disincarnate spirit or ghost um, that uh, stands out that Amongst all the amongst amongst all the many you've had, is there one that <laughs> she can relate that that uh, oh yeah I'll never forget that one sort of thing. Uh, that would be, I woke up to hearing a woman's voice calling my name that I would not respond to on the other dimension, but because of the frequency of it. I opened my eyes and I saw her standing there at my window, which happened to be open. And in the neighborhood I was living in, there's no way in house bells I'd have my window open. All uh, right, not at night, not not in a gang infested <laughs> location. Um, anyway, I saw her standing there and she was fully white. She was fully ghostial form, you know. And I'm like, wow, I've seen a lot of ghosts in my time, but nothing like, nothing quite like that. And there was this, I felt like I was connected to it, but I knew that I wasn't. So I couldn't quite place that feeling state, which attracted me to investigate what it was I was looking at even more. So I got out of bed and I walked over to her to see who she was and, and communicate. And then I noticed that the window was open and I leaned out of it. And I, that's when I took in a big gasp of air. I didn't realize I wasn't breathing at that stage. Um, and once I did that, I turned around. She was gone. And when I looked back, my room was on fire around me. My bed was on fire, my walls all the way around. I, I don't know why. I don't, you know, I know how because later on, you know, it was a um, late night and I had a candle sitting in a tin thinking that was protective enough. It was sitting on a cover. Then there was the plastic. It was like an old 
the old style plastic cheap um, uh, record player multi deck. <laughs> We're going back a bit here, and it somehow melted through the top layer, through the um, MDF particle board, whatever you want to call it, through the record player, through, and then it started on fire, and it just went right round the edge of my bed, right round the whole room. So, so the ghost, did the ghost save your life? Yeah. It wasn't just my life it saved. It saved everybody in the house. There was like, um, I had a couple of kids. I had a, a friend who was living there. She had a couple of kids. Uh, there was, I had a boarder. He had a couple of friends over. You know, it was absolutely crazy times. And everybody was out of the house when I realized what was going on. I put the fire out with my hands. I just went straight up to it and just smothered it. Just boom, 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 boom. Did you um, understand who the who the ghost was? No. To this day, I can't tell you who it was. Okay, I so just... You've had a lot of encounters with demons. So. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't go as far as calling them demons anymore. Okay, demons... So what do you call them now? Um, well, it's just a, your perception of communication. You know, when you start communicating with them, when you start letting them know that what they're doing is is one form of abuse or is or is hindering you in another area and stuff, it's you know, you start breaking down the different areas of what they're doing isn't quite right with what you're doing. You know, if you see a duck out there and you start going and giving it bread, you think you're helping it out, you think you're feeding it. But you're not actually because bread is a processed human form concept, not a duck nature concept. So that duck is going to develop all sorts of tumors and wrongdoings, but you don't realize the connection you're having with that animal. Make sense? Yes. It's the same as us. It's the same as us. So can you tell us... um one or more of your experiences with uh, what you used to call demons? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, one day I'm, this is back in the 80s, I'm cleaning up the house, I'm doing my vacuuming and everything, and I turn around, the TV switched off and everything. I, t- I turn around and I see a shadow um, in the TV. The TV switched off. But I'm seeing a shadow shape, and I'm like, I, I look at it, and I'm like, well, how, where's, how, what's creating that shadow? So I turn around and I have a look, and I, there's nothing that can create this shadow. Um, in its opposite angle, so the TV's here, the wall is over here. I got shelves, I got a pot plant, I've got a fish tank, da 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 da. But when you look at the shadow, the shadow's taking up the whole back wall. There's nothing there. Um, no, there's, there's absolutely nothing there. It's just clear. Anyway, so I look back at the TV, and it's like I'm seeing it more of a solid form now, the entity this is. And it's got like a big box head and a solid form, and it's looking through, and it's looking straight at me. I know it's looking at me. So I turn around and I'm trying to look at the wall and there's still nothing there, even with the curtains the way they are. I went and closed the curtains. I went around the house. I did all sorts of stuff. And when I came back, I looked in the TV. The reflection was still there. I turned around to get another glance of it. This time, this was this is when I <laughs> almost bolted out of the house. Uh, I saw a shadow form on the wall. And it was the same as what I was seeing in the reflection of the turned off TV. And it was huge. It was huge. It was almost like it was the roof where the ceiling was. It was like it was bending over at me. And it was what we, what now I recognize as a shadow, um, as a, a reptilian shadow being. The shadow being part of the reptilian is the dimension that it's coming through. That it's, I, I now, Inner stand where I'm at is 
there's like roads, there's like tunnels, and some of these beings have access to these tunnels that were created by other beings. And they can pop in and have a look sometimes. And when they step through into our dimension, we see them different to what they appear in their dimension. So when I had a, uh, when I went into another dimension one time and these beings chased me back through to this dimension, when they stepped in, I saw they, they turned into, from a solid form, into a shadow being. And I'm, I'm not sure what they saw me as when I was in their dimension, but they chased me. And it reminded me of when I get the plasma sphere beings that come in and fly around, when I followed them one day and how they changed. So me going into their dimension, them coming into our dimension, changes the aspect of the way we communicate with the beings that come in. So when I saw this big-ass creature, at that stage I didn't know what reptilians were. I, you know, I I didn't I wasn't a movie goer. I didn't read books. I didn't I wasn't into anything like that. There wasn't computers, um, or cell phones. Um, and from there on, it was it was back and forward. I felt like I was the tennis ball, looking at the shadow on the wall, watching the way it was moving, and seeing the reaction in the TV shadow. And it, it basically was the same being. Later on, once once that dissipated and it, it, it went, later that evening, I had to go out, and it was almost midnight, and I had to go out to the garage, which was just down the road. But when I went down there, um, I went to pull out after I'd done my business at the garage, I went to pull out, and there was a truck that went past. And I went to pull out, and then it was out of nowhere – this little mini type vehicle that went past and it had a skeleton looking driver driving and it's looking at me and next minute there's another truck that comes out of nowhere now if i had pulled out when i was about to that second truck would have taken me out clean taken me out um i never forgot the images that i saw and when i got the impression that there was a skeleton driving the car i also realized where uh, it was like a voice in my head uh from this being that that shadow being that was on my wall later i would come to have more contact with this particular being um the next one was he leaned over my shoulder and told me to let go of my steering wheel uh, my car was spinning. I don't even know how that started. I, you know, I analyzed everything. You know, what did I do wrong? How did I get myself into this situation? There's no way. And my handbrake was off. Everything was normal. There was traffic coming towards me. I was going that way. There was a cliff on one side and houses on the next side. All of a sudden, my car started to spin in the middle of the road and I I thought I was that was it I'm I'm a goner and I heard a voice lean over me and he said let go well I was already on the way out anyway so I might as well let go and I ended up as if you would drive into somebody's driveway I was so close the passenger side was so close to a concrete power pole that you couldn't open the door you know, I had a baby at the time. He was in the car seat, in the front seat. And we you couldn't open the passenger's door if you tried. And I and I had a, another guy that came running up to me and asked if I was okay and stuff. And then later on, that being came again. So through the process, these beings that I've interacted with, there may have been some programming there that told me I was being hurt I was being wounded. This was this hat was happening or that was happening, but it was a psychological awareness state. As I went, as I got older, I ended up having more and more encounters, and it, it just didn't stop. It just didn't stop. I didn't. I learned the la some of the languages of how to speak to it through the encounters that have come in and shown themselves via other people. So I hope that answers your question. 
I have a tendency to go on tangents, sorry. <laughs> so you, uh, that sounds not so much demonic as shadow. Now, does it doesn't mean it's not dark, but uh, it's not, how do I put this? It's, it's, um, first you said it was a reptilian, then you said it was a shadow being. So, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a reptilian who when steps into my dimension, our dimension is in the form of a shadow being, but I still know him to be a reptilian being. Okay. So right? you're saying he's a reptilian where he comes from, but here he appears yeah. to be a shadow. Yeah. And yeah. Do you, um, I assume he came to do you harm, but did, did he ever, no, I, I can't actually, just because he's big and, I mean, in one stage he pulled me from, I was on a table with the grace and an encounter had taken place with these grace and right on the pinnacle moment, this being stepped into our dimension, or well, into the dimension I was in and basically took me from the grace and the greys are just like standing there, almost shell shocked of what's going on. This reptilian being was able to open some sort of portal into where they were and take from. I knew that I was going into another dimension because I felt the steps as I dragged me up the steps. So, but he's, I can't say he was demonic. He never caused me any ill will. He's always been some form of protector. If anybody else was to see so them. Was, so so he was positive. They, he was positive. Oh, yeah, yeah. I see him as a positive. I definitely see him positive. But others wouldn't. Others wouldn't. Well, the, um, the when, form, you, the, when you the, recognize the form, I, the, the form that a being is in does not indicate their actions. Yeah, like, he that's could have, right. It, it, this being could have presented himself as as an angel, but done negative things. You know, the form and the and the act, action are independent of each other. Obviously. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I was thankful. I, I'm very thankful for the impact. There has been some demonic entities and forces that have come in. But they've always come in via other people, other people's energies, what practice, how I see parasitical entities harvesting people's energies when they recognize, like when the entity recognizes that I can see them, then I see the way they control the host. Some of the hosts are aware that they are not alone. Um, I've, I've had a couple of encounters where uh, one in particular, I went into a sauna with a couple of mates and while I was in there, this Asian chap came in, little Asian chap came in and sat down, but he wasn't alone. There were, he had an attachment with him and I, wow, this was like, what am I looking at here? This is neat, you know? Um, and as soon as it, as soon as I was thinking these things, it looked up and looked straight at me. And I'm like, I can see you. You know, I wasn't sure. I I wasn't sure what I was seeing. You know, I was like, is this heat in the sauna getting to me? This sort of, <laughs> you know, you've got to analyze everything. Um, but then it's it started making the host panic. The, the host knew that I could see something was going on. And he obviously knew that something was going on, but he just got on with life. When they they left, I'm, I'm jumping through it pretty fast. They they left and then they came back in, and it was the host that forced the parasitical entity to come back in. And in doing so, it was like I had some sort of telepathic connection with the host, knowing he wanted some sort of um, – confirmation or something um, that he wasn't alone and that there was either a curse or, or something that was attached to him. And when I gave him that confirmation, 
you could say I could well I could see that the being that was attached to a parasitic entity wasn't happy, but the human was happy that he now had the confirmation and was able to make changes when he left this my you know this whole connection that we had so that took me to another level once i saw and got familiar with that frequency of what parasitical entities were i was i it just opened up all of this that was about 2005 it started 2010 it started getting really chaotic i had orbs ghosts energies i had ufos i had the whole bloody works coming in at once um and it's it's only it's not slowed down i've taught myself and i've told them how i function and so communication there has to be boundaries put into place and protocols so before you get into that that layer of interesting uh, circumstances. Uh, Misha said that uh, going through the MK Ultra, she was split into uh, many, many, many personalities. Did they do that yep. to you as well? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I started writing a book called The Many Masks I Wear, and that was whatever presented itself. I could step into that persona. I could splinter myself. I, If I went into a traumatic state, I could actually leave my physical being and stand there with these other entities and watch, watch what was taking place on the physical. Um, in being able to do that, I was able to see the programming, the programming from the blue, the pink, to right now where they're doing the transhumanism changeover and all of this other stuff, the the programming stops. It, it's it's meant to keep you in stuck states. When you can see that it can splinter you, so that like I was going to counselling for a while, and I believe that my counsellor was my friend. I later discovered that she was just setting me up for another fall, another stuck state. And these, it, it took me a long, it, I had to break the different shards. I called them shards for a while, the different splinter selves of me, and I had to find them and bring them back to me to become a wholeness. Um yeah, there, there's so many areas of it. There was, I, everybody was named auntie or uncle. There was no names. So when any shit went down, excuse me, when anything, you know, on the on the traumatic pattern imprinting area would go down, that would splinter in yourself because the trauma was, I had to just shut off from it. Once it happened, you had to shut off and get on with life. Okay. There was no time to analyze what you just experienced or how to cope to get through it. You just had to switch it off. It happened. Move on. You're still alive. If you say too much, you're going to be wounded. You don't want those. Yet the program is so strong. My, my programming was I held on to my most authentic truth. When I reached out there, to inform everybody for help over and over again. They weren't helping me. They weren't believing what I was saying. Sorry, somebody's just started up a chainsaw in the distance. Oh, that's okay. It's not, it's, not, it. it's not loud enough to bother us. It's not coming in that loud. So you can hear it better than we can. Yeah, yeah. So um, what, did they, what did they use you? What was... Um, of all the things they did to you, what uh, what stands out as what was your purpose in the realm of the dark ones who were uh, doing these things to you? What did what did they do? Uh, uh, how do I put this? What what were you used for? What was your purpose for them? Um, 
um, right before, right as I came in, I came in as a walk-in, and this body, this the the vessel, the entity that was coming in was going on a journey. My sister died uh, 27 days after I arrived. the The first day that I was let out of the hospital back to the back to the home. Um, <laughs> Sorry, that chainsaw was really messing me up. Um, oh my God, could you could could you please hold for a second? I really got to sort this out. It's it's outside my window. Excuse me. Close your. Sorry, window. honey. If you want to close your window, you can close it. Sorry about that. Did you close your window? Oh, I did more than that. <laughs> That's all right. I'm back. All right. So never fails. It never fails. <laughs> you, were, you were getting a little distracted, so uh, go on with your story. Uh, sorry, what was the question? Uh, the meaning of life, 42. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, was you were... Oh, I asked you how, uh, what they were, what were they using oh. for? Okay, okay. Um, I've gone through satanic ritual abuse. Um, they've performed all sorts of weird rituals. I've seen people disappear. It's definitely, a, it was always a, an energy harvesting. Um, fear at least, harvesting. At least you got into that. Yeah, it's keeping people in stuck states so they don't see who they are, their abilities, the, the, the true shine behind who we are, what we can generate, how we can heal this whole planet. You know, it's absolutely amazing what we actually are. And I'm now in a headspace where everything I've gone through, all the darkness that I went through, one, it kept me sheltered from uh, being found as a light energy source. Two, it was also a form of harvesting my energy, my information. I don't know any, I don't know who I am, what I am. I just go with the flow. Um, but I know I can create that energy. I know that there's pretty much all the different things they threw at me throughout my lifetime. This, I've been able to get through it. You know, uh, cancer, illness, um, so so much invasion. You know, personal invasion, exterior invasion has just been absolutely diabolical. The practices in magic, watching the different arts, watching the, the way they conjured in the different beings, and these beings were just laughing. They were just laughing at the humans that called them in because they were there anyway. You know, that, that to me is more demonic than some of the acts that I've seen take place. Um, I've known of children just totally disappearing. Um, there's all sorts of footage of me as a child out there somewhere, and that's one day it will show up, and I am aware of this. That is demonic to me. 
uh, when a being comes in and it wants to cause me harm now, I know that I have the abilities, whatever the dimension, to protect myself, as does all, uh, all of the light energy forces that are here. Oh, now my camera's gone. It's okay, keep it? talking. Uh, <laughs> so, so okay. So, with with Misha, they used her as a, a sex party favor, and they used her to as a courier of information, so that you don't uh, end up talking over communications that can be recorded or bugged. So that's that's one of the two of the things that they used her for. What did they use you for? Uh, not 100 percent sure. I just know that when I came in, my sister was sacrificed. She had just turned one years old and she died. Um, and then later on, the same the same sacrifice took place. I lost my first child to cot death, and his energy form stayed around for a while after that. So I got to recognise a pattern between uh, ritualistic practices you know even if we don't sign up for them if I, I mean I did nothing in this lifetime to believe that I would have signed up for something that took place like it did um, I was used through I mean I, I can't tell you the amount of abuse sexual abuse that I've had and I don't know how I got through any of it I really don't know how I got through any of it uh, I, I do know that I was able to leave my body and allow things to happen the way they were happening. Um, I've been choked to death. I've been smothered. I've had a lot of out-of-body experiences, and then I've always come back. They called it a little death. It was a bit different to the sexual little death. Um, when it comes to the sexual side, they use the sexual side as a harvesting of energy. When I got to a certain age, I was like, well, I, I can see what people are taking from me through this act. So I no longer want to participate in that act. I had to find out when I was growing up, one of the programs for love was sex. And when I discovered that sex was not love, and when I questioned it, the re responses that I got really broke that programming i don't have the need for love i i see it as a program i have a state of appreciation and gratitude for the sharing of this journey with another because it's not just a solidified form there's so much more to what takes place than what they harvested from you know from the encounters um there's i know there's a demonic side to it the darker side of it which is an abuse that the the physical holds on to the imprints the memories of what you experienced i'm able to see it and sense it in others when they're going through different areas in their own experiences uh, i worked as an advocate for a long time uh, mothers of mercy they were women who were being victimized by their partners. It didn't matter their age. Um, in a, a lot of cultures, in mine specifically, you get through it. You don't speak about it. You just get on. You just move on to the next day. And this was the way of the pioneers. We didn't, they didn't do anything about it. We got on with life. It was something that happened and you move forward. You can question it later on down the track, like I question it now. And it reveals itself. It reveals that, you know, there's so many tunnels to the uh, filtering of energy. Now, as a walk-in, as a multidimensional you know, awareness, I, I'm aware that if I have three or four different species aspects spliced into my DNA, then I'm going to be more familiarized with these beings that are coming in and visiting because I can I can sense their frequency. It's within my own frequency. And so when I've got an entity that's interacting with another entity, I'm going to feel something from that because I can feel the two forces at war. It's like, you know, when they talk about you've got the angel on one side, you've got the demon on the other side. 
one's telling you yes, the other one's telling you no, but you know within yourself where you're going to decide what you're going to choose. Right? This is our learning. This is one side's dark and one side's light. I don't see it as that anymore. I see it as I am the center point and where, which, whichever direction I am at, wherever I look, if I can spin around with my arms out, I know that that is my defense shield. That's what I, you know, that's what I've got to take care of. That's my center point. Now we can start to sway left on the darker side, but it's always just the beings coming in to communicate. When we, the the biggest thing for me was learning to communicate with these multidimensional beings. Are you, I have what is everybody calls night terrors. I see them as accessing different dimensions. If you go into somebody else's home and property, they're going to come running out at you and saying, what do you want? Who are you? And this is no different when we enter into these other dimensions. You're going to go in and they're going to say, hi, who are you? What are you doing here? You're not meant to be here. If I see an orb or a UFO or an energy form plasma, I'm going to go running out there with the camera and say, hi, how's it going? Show yourself in true form, da, 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 da. And, and this is how we're all doing it. This is a form of communication. We're looking for the boundaries of our communication. If an entity comes in and does something and it causes me ill will or harm afterwards as an after effect, because that does happen. If I put in too much energy somewhere, then I'm going to get, I'm going to pick up some ills from, you know, I, there's just symptoms, ills from that interaction. And this is the same as, when they splinter you, when they splintered me, they really did. They they used me in different forms of sexual cult, um, murder. You know, I, you, you can't, nobody can be accused of murdering me because I'm not dead. But if you go into Admiralty Maritime, Maritime Law, we are dead. They only know us as dead. Um, and so... That's that's spell casting. That's another area of energy form. When I saw myself as a splinter self, saw what they had actually done from from very very young right through different persons. I lived in 26 different homes by the time I was 13 years old. Um, I don't have it in front of me, but I mapped it all out. Uh, I went to something like 15, 16 schools. Um, I, I spent maybe four years with my biological parents. The rest of the time, I bounced from home to home. I had homes, what they called homestays or farm stays. That basically was farming you out to the next perpetrator. Um, I went through deportment. Uh, I was married into the Masonic Order when I was 11, 12. Didn't know what it meant at the time. I didn't have any, you know, it was just, oh, I'm special, I'm special, this is happening to me, I'm lucky. You know, but when you when you realise what's going on, it's the same as taking com commune, you know, communion when you go into church. Let's go on with um, your life to where you started having the connection with the aliens. What was the very first um, alien experience you had? Oh, geez. Okay. I, I, um, when I started making the connections, I had just lost my son. He was 10 and a half months. He died of a cot death. Uh, two weeks after that, uh, I mean, I already have paranormal stuff, what, what people label paranormal, like ghosts and tappings and this and that and smells and stuff. They, they always happened, okay? But it, it got to the point that other people were seeing. They were hearing things. I, When he passed over, I had a train, a toy train, that he would get up and walk behind Porsche and it would toot. Well, the, we left that in his room and one I heard that going off, passed into his room and the whole room was full of a mist. And at one stage, I would have said to you that was a ghost. There was a he was coming back to his room and all of this. 
um, because I was in an emotional state, I was staying together for all the other other encounters and incidents that have taken place. Um, I had a light come into my room, and it got so so intense that I couldn't see the corners of the rooms, and then there was an entity coming down the steps and as it got closer there was an, another entity holding its hand and as it got closer it turned out my impression of it was it was jesus and that's from early childhood programming that jesus is in heaven when people die and and the he was holding the hand of my son who just passed on walking down these steps there were other things that went with it, like the sound. It's, it sounded like a lot of feathers, a lot of flying, a lot of something coming in. And you could see them standing on the sides of the steps as these entities came in. And on when, I, when my son reached his hand out to me in the experience, I reached back and I got to the point where I was almost touching and I pulled away. There was something that wasn't right about it. So anyway, once it dissipated, like as soon as I decided not to take that step, it dissipated fast. And I felt like I plummeted back into my body. It was a heavy weight. It was like, oh, geez. You know, and then I'm like, please, 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 please let it happen again. Let it happen again. I won't be the chicken. As soon as I said that, I knew that I had my face. I was laying on my stomach. I had my face into the pillow. Uh, the bay window was at where my feet were. And and the whole room started to light up. And I found myself sitting up looking at the bay window where the light came in. But I could feel myself physically lying in the position that I was lying in. And it's it, they started to come down the steps. But this time, when, I, when he reached out to my hand and stuff, it wasn't right. It it didn't. It wasn't normal. And as soon as I realised it wasn't normal, uh, the illusion that was Jesus holding my son's hand turned into a tall grey and a short grey. Later on, the next experience I had was with Grace oh, and the light. Oh, oh, stop! Don't don't rush off now. Go back. Go back to that experience. How did it end? What was the Keep going, keep finishing that experience before we go to the next one. Don't rush off. Okay, how do I not rush? Okay, well, I basically rolled over and went to sleep. Um, I knew so that is, I had it. So it, I couldn't talk to anybody about it. This is back in the 80s, early night, yeah, 80s, uh, 89. I could, there was nobody for me to talk to about the experience that I had. So I just, just, you know, let it go like everything else. But I mean, did the, uh, there, you got a tall and a short gray standing there. Where, yeah. where, did they disappear? What happened to the, what happened to them? Well, as, as soon as I realized that I, they, when they, when I saw them as they were, right, they realized that I could. And as soon as that happened, the light just basically engulfed and then dissipated back the way that it came. And I just, wow, I just went to sleep. I just went to sleep. Oh, I didn't. Okay, so you, you saw beyond the illusion and they didn't, I guess they didn't like that, so they left. Yeah, there was nothing else after that one. There was a lot of other encounters with other beings that showed themselves after the fact and others around me could see them and class them as paranormal but i to this day feel that they were connected to the, the illusions and energies of, of these beings that came in i would later as i had more encounters with the set of beings realize what was going on how they how they could use the light room, light energy to manipulate where you're at. They can bring you on. It's like a ship that they can open up, a room that you can be in, a platform that you can be standing on with other humans standing there. Um, they can be like a little ship and engulf to the point where they can go right through you and knock you on your butt. <laughs> 
I I had the next major encounter I had with this specific group of beings was one was standing in the doorway and I thought it was my other son. This was like 10, 10, 15 years later. My next son, he was standing in the doorway and as soon as I realised there's no way he could be standing in the doorway, the illusion was broken. I was in um, a paralysed state of fear like night terror paralysis and so was my partner at the time. We knew we were facing outwards, so back to back, but I could hear what he was thinking and, and vice versa. And when I had that split second thought that I knew that that energy standing in the doorway wasn't the image that was being portrayed, the, it, it faded and I saw a little grey. It was this. It was the same little grey that was using. He was the image of my son who passed on, back on the steps. And as soon as I was able to break out of paralysis, and that was the first time I could actually do that. And after I broke that one, I realised I could break it each, each time I went into it. So each time I had a night night paralysis, I would take it that step further. Every time I've had any form of encounter, I would anal analyze my surroundings, my frequency, my conscious awareness, uh, look for landmarks, question everything, question everything, see what your capabilities are, see who you're communicating with, because eventually you find out that there's somebody there that you're connected to, and this is why you're there. So in, in this next, you know, the one that I'm talking about, I was able to break into the kids' room, see the room was engulfed in light, watch that light um, engulf in itself into a little ball and shoot out and hit me. It hit me. It flung me on the floor. I had a wooden floor. I skidded. My partner came out of my our room at that stage and saw me on the floor. We went into the kids' room. Uh, they were all in different positions. One of my children had a bloody nose. We left the house. We went into the bathroom, which was that we had an outhouse because we live in rural. They went, we all did that. And then we went up the road. We looked back, we checked the house because we'd had heard footsteps and weird things earlier on that evening. But we didn't, we didn't worry. We'd had some strange things like a, a bird that had died. We heard it scratching in the box and chirping. So we went to check on it, and there's no way that it could have been. It, it was long gone, you know. Excuse me for a moment. And um, from there, strange things kept happening. We woke up the next day in our beds, but there's no recollection of how we that could have even happened because we left the house. We drove down the road. We were set to stay in the car that night. I have no idea to this day how we ended up in our beds, all of us. So there was that. And then later on, I had other encounters where they've come in. And it just, I was able to see the pattern of the white light, how they use the white light. Um, and it's not just them. It's other beings as well, and how some of the tall, tall white greys work with the medium greys and the short greys. Then you've got the brown greys that have got the funny knees. They can jump, like they can really jump. They come in sets, twos and threes, um, and because they're aware that I'm aware, I can. I my boundary is you let me know when you're coming in. You let me know. And, and they do through the tap knockings, uh, strange light things go on, orbs start coming up, people start reacting in weird ways, react in weird ways. I just know it's going to happen and then it'll happen to me and if it doesn't happen to me immediately, it'll happen to either my son or my grandson and I'll get a message back from them saying, oh, I just think of this. They don't go into detail. They just say they've had a night terror. And I can pretty much guarantee within a couple of days, we're, we're only in a couple of days of each other. If I have one, you know, it's, you know, and it's just, yeah, people say how 
I had to break the fact that night terrors, they say, came from a form of trauma-based. I would say there's a certain degree of that that is correct, but in some of these encounters, I also am aware that there is communication that takes place beforehand, but we need to be able to identify that. It's like symptoms. When we get sick, we get symptoms. We, when they're trying to communicate with us, if we're not listening, it's just going to seem like something weird's happening around us. When you can see and communicate with the signals that are coming in, when I went into one of these ones, the last one, and I caught a recording of it, I was in a tube uh, with a tall white grey. And the communication we had was very friendly. There was no harm. There was no, there was nothing negative about it. Um, and when I listened to the recording afterwards, anybody else that listens to it can hear what it sounds like when I go into an actual night terror. And some of it is, it can be, can come back as blood curdling screams and cries and stuff. But what it actually, what I found it is, and, you know, people have also said, you know, because of their abilities, they can form an illusion so that you believe that you're in a state of non-harm. I've been in these states myself, and I know you can manifest your own protection if you were strong enough, if you knew what was going on. And for where I come from, I see these interactions all the time. I, I now live rural. I don't like interacting with people in real life <laughs> because these entities are here with us 24-7. There's, there's no denying it. So, um, so you had a, a reptilian shadow being that protects you. You have greys that short and tall that they come in and uh, pretend to be something they're not. And um, what other types of aliens have you encountered? I've got the light beings. Um, so give it, give us uh, one of each, at least one of each. <laughs> okay. Uh, one of the light beings that come in, they're, they're like the orange plasma spheres. We had those coming in and flying over top of the house, made sure all the neighbours <laughs> were aware of it as well because I didn't want it just to be myself and my partner at the time. Um, I was the street crazy who would see weird things and people would see them. They'd take photos of themselves, right? Um, excuse me. These spheres, these plasma sphere ships, got to the stage where they could come right down underneath the power lines, come across the yard, go up inside what was like a, a, a sack, and their bright illumination, as soon as they went up in the shack, it was like a cloak. It would cloak them. One day we had one that came down under the power lines, went over the hedge, came into our courtyard. Courtyard is where we, we park our cars and stuff. Came across in front of us, went up over the water tank and in between a tiny gap around the house, out the back, over the house, uh, over the trees, sorry. And um, if we had had a broom handle, a broom that night, we would have been able to touch it. That's how close they came to us, hovering above us to the point where we could look up inside it. And that was absolutely a, a pinnacle changing point in all of my encounters and everything that we saw. It was a very busy year. So how, big, how big was that craft? How big was it? Um, honestly, the, the spheres were like about this big, but with their energies, they could appear a whole heck of a lot bigger. They could change their orange plasma color to a white. Uh, they could dim right down to where you couldn't, you you don't just see them if you knew you were looking at them. When they went up into the cloaking device, <coughs> they would move away and undulate. It would undulate, and it would just it would move so slowly it looked like a cloud. All right, it's one of those things. Once you saw it, 
you knew you were looking at it, you would be able to follow it. And that's what we did. We chased them all over the show. We jumped in the car and we followed them. We ran up and down the streets and over the parks. And <laughs> we, we had some crazy adventures following these orange plasmaspheres. I got lots of pictures. I got footage. I got video footage of them flying in and, and you know, in the distance coming in. And every single time I see something, I get excited. It's, it's absolutely thrilling because if I can see it, then everybody else can see it. That so what's the difference important. between an orb and a, and a plasma ship? Okay, <clears throat> a plasma ship is from pretty much our exterior. All right? They can't do the dimensional. They are more solidified. They they come through a portal into our realm, right? Um, and the dimensionals are of another dimension coming into our our um, dimension. They, I don't, I've not seen them interact with these type of plasma spheres. Totally different chemistry. Totally different chemistry. So you you said you encountered the actual light beings themselves. Yeah. Uh, so do you distinguish between the craft and the beings or not? Well, the being is the craft. They they can morph that energy. They know how to use that energy. They are that energy. Um, they morph. They came. It came through the roof, down down the side of the bed, morphed into a humanoid form, tall male. That was the energy that I got. Then it split into two, and there was one that was slightly smaller, and it felt more feminine energy, more delicate energies. And then it morphed back into one, went along the edge of the foot of the bed, and then up the other side where I was sitting. And then he leaned over the top of me, and it was, it was only about this, maybe this far away from my face to his face. No face, it was just energy. The first time I'd seen them, I thought, I'm going to go blind. I'm going to go blind or I'm going to catch on fire. Okay, that was me telling myself little key notes. One thing I've done through these journeys is, giving yourself a key note so that you can reflect back to it when you get into it, okay, when you're able to analyze it and break it down. Every time you do this, you're taking in information. You're taking in so much information, and every now and then if you give yourself a key word, you are filing it. You'll be able to go back and pick that up later on. So with this energy being leaning over the top of me in humanoid form, I'm not in fear. I've, there's none of that has creeped in at any of the stage, you know, none of it. And then when it took on, it started to take on like a skin, a human skin texture coming up and it started to take on facial features. And when it got to the, about the eyebrows, I freaked out. I, I let out a, a, a scream and I bolted out of the house because I recognized the facial features it was using. And it wasn't using those facial features to scare me. It was using them because that was familiar to me. Um, I thought it was the spirit of someone who, I, my partner at the time had gone for a walk. I thought something bad, tragic had happened. And once I got, um, I had a boarder in the house, he jumped up, he said, what's going on, what's going on, you know. I raced to the front door, opened it, and my partner walked in. So it wasn't his spirit. So, yeah. So you thought your partner had just died? Yeah, I, I did. I did. And that's what broke that connection that I had with these beings. I don't know if the beings were still in my room when I left the room. I just jumped up and I raced out. I was awake. I was sitting up in bed. The light was on. So it was, it was clear as anything. So, okay, so uh, so you you had encounters with greys, reptilian uh, shadow beings, and light beings. What else? What other beings are in your uh, in your zoo there with you, or have, <laughs> have been there with you? All right. 
well, okay, so I've got the different types of orbs, okay? I've got what I call a synthetic orb, which is another dimension interacting within their dimension, and they've been able to mass produce like clones into our dimension to harvest energy out of our atmosphere and from around us, then to morph into other beings that can inhabit. And since 20, what, 20, yeah, 2005 to 2010, I started seeing things, these things. In by 2010, they were coming in a flood, mass flood. So I was able to differentiate between the ones that were of living entities, ones that were flying ships, <laughs> and ones that were portals, and ones that were synthetic. They showed me how they came in, in light form, and they showed me things like they're going through one, one side of the wall and out the other side. Uh, they are different to the orb, the plasma orbs, the white plasma orbs that come in. People call them Tic Tacs. We watched one one day in daylight do a zigzag and go into a, a Hercules military aircraft that had been doing flyovers for two to three weeks over top of our house, and we knew we weren't in their flight path. Right? They were practicing picking something up, and we just happened to be out there on the deck one day, and we watched them watch this thing appear out of nowhere, zigzag, and go into this military plane. The plane did not do any more flyovers after that day. That, that whatever went into the plane did not go past it, did not cause any damage to it. So from there on, we knew that there is a difference between they can come into our dimension at any stage. Okay, the military are, and the governments are aware definitely of what's coming in and what's going out. And it's by permission I've seen star gates open up. I've seen them come in. I've seen the stars communicate. It doesn't take long. Within within three minutes, two stars communicating with each other. You see where the stargate is. You see different ships come in. I've watched them shooting each other through like these blimmin' wormholes around us. Um, I have an entity that I call the Flasher. And I, he's only nicknamed that because of the forms of communication that we had developed between us. And over the period of time, I've got to encounter the hierarchy within that system. You know, they may have been the captain of that ship, but they had a hierarchy telling them where they had to fly. And when they had too much interaction with me, I felt I was there watching the two ships above the house and at the same time, because of my connection with him, I felt like I was on board with them while he was being told off for too much interaction with the human beings down here. You know, um, there's, there's been so, so many different forms of entities that have come in and have communicated different, different ghosts. Uh, I've played with different forms of energies over the years. I know what's worked for me and what hasn't worked for me, what's been scary. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I love my zoo. <laughs> so what other zoo besides the – okay, so you got light beings, light ships, uh, orbs. Uh, or interdimensionals. Inter or interdimensionals. Um, greys and one reptilian shadow – creature what else is what else do you have the, okay when it comes to the shadow creatures i've got i've got more than one shadow creature okay um the shadow basically what i've what i've found from my my adventure is um the shadow beings are come from a certain dimension and it's like we on this dimension have all different thousands of different species on this planet and suddenly we're going to be, if suddenly we're pushed into another dimension 
we're going to appear differently. Okay? Our light is different, so we're going to appear different. Where I've when I when I got chased by these guys that were like men in black, what you'd normally call men in black, when one of them stepped into our dimension, he came in as a shadow being and then quickly dissipated. So it was like I could see him as one form in his dimension and he could see me as a different form than what I am than you than what you can see here. Uh, when I was I was having a communication one time with one of these plasma beings and, and some of these orb things, and what I discovered was what they see of us is not this vessel, okay? They they see our inner light. So you know we want to we want to levitate, but we already are levitating because they can't see us in this vessel, walking around grounded energy. They're seeing us as the undulating generated energy of awareness. So it's like, well, okay, so now that gives me another perspective of when I'm interacting on these different dimensions, the first thing I gotta do is is find out what my reflection is. I gotta find out how they see me. Uh, because when, if they come into my reality, they, I'm going to see them different to what I see them in their dimension. So it comes down to the energy recognition, what I recognize their energy fields as. Sorry, I think I went off track again. So, okay, so um, not really. So uh, tying in what you just said with something you said earlier about um, – you said you went out of your body and uh, you've been killed, but you didn't stay dead. Okay, so uh, we've gone over um, your MKUltra. We've gone over your aliens and other um, types of beings, your, your zoo. And next, I'd like to go over your travels. So you've, when you have been killed, uh, and been on the other side temporarily, or you've gone out of your body like an uh, OBE. Yeah. OBE versus NDE versus whatever. Uh, give us a sense of uh, the experiences you've gone through that are not within your body, all the different varieties of experiences you've had that were not okay. in your body. Okay. Starting with the first one. <laughs> Okay. Um, what? What? Well, for me, one of the first times I saw, I really took note. I was five years old. I was coming home from school, Pomaria Primary, and I watched this young chap on his bicycle come straight out of his driveway across the road, get hit by a car, and die in front of me while staring at me. I watched him telepathically talk to me at the last breath and I watched him leave his body and when I saw that it was like the whole time he was focused on me the whole time he was communicating with me um I didn't I didn't see him as a bad element or anything like that later on I I started discovering that the first time I left my body, I got to see these other entities. <clears throat> oh, dear. I got to see these other entities that were standing next to me. And I couldn't figure out why they weren't helping me over there that was going through what I was going through. But this was all a telepathic connection because I'm standing there. There's nothing verbal. It's just look, glance, information, download, look back at the event. Later through the process, I would encounter these these different beings over and over again. And it was almost as if I, they weren't going to let me die. They weren't going to let me cross over. Um uh, each time I've tried to, it hasn't been anything like this bright light thing that people have talked about. 
it's been entities. Entities have been there. One of the encounters I had out of my body was I'm I'm lying there and I could hear these voices and it, there was the voices were so scary. I went into uh, a paralyzed state of fear. I could not physically move. I was physically awake. The eyes were awake. There were faces like if you could uh, you could imagine um, you know the scream mask. Um, there were faces and hands, but no bodies, and it was dark. It was just shadows. It was, and they were ripping me out of my physicality, and it was, it was, it was like a tearing sensation, and it, and it was hurting, and it got to my feet, and I'm begging them, I'm begging them with my internal breath, to don't do this to me, don't do this to me, and then they left. It was all, it was over as fast as it started, and it was, a, I can breathe again, I can breathe again. But on their way out, they said they would be back and they'd always be watching. And over the process of time through that, they've shown me the, the fairy tales. There's an element of truth to the Bible, the fairy tales. This is just my findings. Everybody's, whatever you do with these stories, they're your own. Um, and, and the Bible has given me a couple of blueprints to our behavior our mannerisms and 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 they fit they fit but because i can't trust myself a hundred percent maybe 99 percent but not that hundred percent um that that one percent keeps me human that keeps me grounded it keeps me okay well i know that there's more to this than what meets the normal eye so one stage I did a backflip on a trampoline and knocked myself out, cracked my skull. Um, woke up in between three or four times and each time there wasn't just people, humans that I knew and doctors and nurses and other crazy people there. There are also these beings standing there. Um, some of the darker stuff that I went through, one of the, one of the darker ones I went through it was um, strangulation and weight and everything just went dark. And from there, when I came back, I just, I was running down the street and it was daylight. I don't know how I came from the dark to running down the street. I don't know what happened in between. There's missing time. And I'm not worried about that missing time. I just know I got away. Somehow I got away. Um, there's been a couple of occasions like that. Like so, I went. So before you go on, so the beings that pulled you, they tried to pull you out of your body. What did they look like, and who do you think, who do you think they were, and what would you think oh. their purpose was? What do you think they wanted? At that time and at that location. They were they they didn't feel like they were good entities, okay? They didn't they they felt like ritualistic entities. They reminded me of shit that I'd went through when I was younger. I had rituals where I would I had been taken out into the forest. There was an altar. There was a regular place. But you didn't know how to get there because there was always the the proceed you know the the grooming beforehand the rituals they went through before, um, and the blindfolds. And so you'd get there not knowing how you got there. You'd go through certain events and you don't know how, you, you wouldn't know how you went, but you have little snippets of what you experience and you have others that you recall as witnesses. Um, the masks that they wore and they wore masks and these masks were, to re represent the energies that they were harvesting from you. They were playing certain roles of harvesters. You had the bird, you had the, you had the different types of animals, you had the reptilians, you had all, you know, they played that role of that characteristic in the satanic ritual. There would be bloodletting of one sort or another, there'd be rape, there'd be threat of the mind. Like when you see a, a blade coming down and touching you, you go and, and of my physicality now in some of these rituals that i went through knocking me out of my physicality 
these some of these people that were practicing these these behaviors knew what they were doing by knocking me out of my physicality and and it wasn't the physical that they were after it was the energies and the it was like they were hijacking my energies of me leaving my physical so you'd go through the ritual of attachment that would attach them to you and then they'd put you into such a fear state that you would leave your physical and by you leaving the physical you have them as your attachment so wherever you went to they were coming along their 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 dimensional self their dimensional aspect was coming along with you so i had i had other beings i had um I, I can't tell you exactly what they were but there was this tall being and it felt it felt you could almost imagine it like a tall tall ghost female tall ghost standing there then there was uh, another one lower down which was like a, a girl from another age another era of you know another another self so to speak um which is another story which i'd get to know and i'd know why she was there because she had encountered the same fear states the same stuck states the same crap that was i was i had experienced in this reality um and then there was a gray there's all, there were a few different beings you know um I, i've tried to draw it out <laughs> my drawing is pretty bad but i tried to get it out there and each of these beings that were there not just guardians but they're also collecting information i basically for me to get through everything that i've gone through i put it down to a training i, I was under some form of training and everything that i went through i had to, it was a test did i make it through to the other side did i get through now what was the information that i got from it that information is here now and i know that with this information i have now there's that much more information that on a dimensional aspect that's going to eventually show itself again so i'm don't even stress over any of that anymore um all these different aspects of beings are basically frequency signatures from the dimensions that they've come from i don't know why i have the amount of connections and communications that i do have uh it's it's easier for me just to go with the flow admit and acknowledge when i am having these encounters it doesn't matter if nobody else around me believes me or or has has their own experience it, none of that matters none of that really matters it's you've got to believe in yourself and the encounters that you are having you know we if, every single step of the way something else will reveal itself to you so let's go back for a moment to um the satanic rituals um do you have an do you have any idea why the satanists call in the powerful or demonic or dark spirits into why what's the purpose of um you know manipulating people and doing all these rituals and in the end calling in um dark forces what does the satanist uh seek from is it power or what what are they looking for uh with all pa this pa work? power is an illusion okay I, I, I understand it's an illusion. illusion, but but they have a belief that if they call in X dark spirit or X dark demon or whatever, that something's going to happen. They're doing it for a reason. I realize that it's, it's all an illusion, but my point is, it, it's still a question. Why do they do these things? What's the, what is the, in their mind, why are they um, going to all this effort? And, and and selling their own soul or whatever it is that they're doing to get the result what is the ultimate result that's that they believe they're going to achieve 
Okay, well, one, I can't really answer for what they're doing, why they're doing it, but for what I have seen for those that I have known that have practiced these arts, to me now they are cowards, okay? They are fake people expecting a handout from another force who's probably going to eat them in the in the first place. Um, they don't, at the end of the day, one of the things that came to me was um, they were able to take the soul, our self-awareness, out of one vessel and stick it into another vessel. And so in the early days, a lot of the information that came in about the stuff that they had put me through was how they can prolong, how they can get attachment as fast as they can, access and attachment as fast as they can to be able to go into these different, we call them states, but I call them dimensions. Um, a lot of these beings, when they do the rituals, can hijack energy forms and be the um, be the middleman saying, well, I can bring you this and I can give you this amount of energy from it, So, but this is what I want in return. Some of the darker magicians that I've known um, – have done it for it, it it basically comes down to longevity not just here in the physical but also on the other planes because they didn't because they didn't believe in themselves enough because they, they've also gone through programs themselves and this is the only way that they've known so this is what they've practiced um, it might be because their great grandfathers did it and so on and so on down the practice and they've got to keep it in the family line to keep it a pure magic. But then you've got those that just they know how to play with the energies. They know how to play with the magic that they harvest. I mean, I see many, many cultures out there with little boxes here and there, different stadiums designed certain ways to harvest energy um you know playing fields it's all there to harvest and generate the energy so when some of the darker magic that i've seen have called on forces that are able to like if you eat certain foods or have certain chemicals in your body you're very susceptible to being able to be taken over or hijacked into different dimensions, into dark, into some of the darker dimensions. Um, yeah, people have nightmares. They don't know why they have them. They they fill their heads with anxiety frequencies, and then they go to sleep. And when they go to sleep, their their body may be resting, but they're not asleep. They're busy in another dimension. And while they have access that dimension, then they're ninety nine percent not alone. They've taken something with them in there because they have that imprint. Uh, I find find with music, um, music has been created to open up these doorways, to harvest the energy from these doorways. I can transmute a negative energy into a positive energy. This is from negative music to positive music. I can take something from it and transmute it into an energy that I can use with what purpose I use it for. That's up to me. And I believe this is the same with the rituals right from I'm, I'm an alchemist. I'm a forager. Um, I go out there and I, I can communicate with the plants around me and they'll tell me the medicines that they can offer me and this sort of thing. And as well as how to prepare them. And what the dosages are of them. I get little tidbits of what to stay away from, how far I can push my boundaries. <laughs> and this this is all part of the magic, the part of the dark magic, what they can harvest from us. If they wanted us to be gone, we'd all be gone just like that. So there's something more that they want from us. The rainbow to me is a collection that we are interacting with all the time. How we get access to that is up to us. 
there's those energy forces out there from different dimensions that are aware how to access it. When I was on the table with Grace and my reptilian who stepped in, he stepped in as a shadow, but I know he's not a shadow. I know he's more solidified. Grabbed me and took me away from them. I had just come to the point of um, accept that these greys weren't actually doing me any harm and they were doing something for my betterment. But then when the reptilian stepped in and dragged me away and I was kicking and screaming and I bit his arm to try to get away from that, he put me in a body lock so that I wouldn't hurt myself or him as he got me out of there. And I knew I went into a different dimension because of the steps that I went up through. These greys didn't leave the side of the table. They stood there and they just watched as this took place. So for me, I was seeing that these, these different beings are able to access each other's dimensions, not all of them, not all of them. Some are still forbidden, but there are there are those that have found ways in and out of other dimensions. So I I don't. Yep. So if, if he's your protector, why did he remove you when they were benefiting you? I don't know that they were benefiting me. I just know that I that's what my perception. That's what my perception was at the time. I'd come to that conclusion. That okay. they weren't doing any harm to me at the time because I'd already been taught that I can be in these places and have no fear and no pain. See, in this in this physical body, because of the information that I'd gathered in these other dimensions, I was able to experience true physical pain, but recognize the sensation and not get sucked into these endorphin feeding chemicals. Okay, stay calm, stay calm. So um, I'm going to ask you a question I just asked you again and see if you get a, you have a different response. When you've gone out of your body into other dimensions or other places through having been killed ritually or in any, in any fashion, uh, where have you gone and what did you experience? I've never experienced this angelic stuff with all these angel beings in heaven, okay? I've experienced a dark tunnel with other beings coming at me. But like if you can remember the movie Ghost and there's those beings in the street, they're almost like... Um, Oh, Jesus. I, I know what you're referring to. Go on. Yeah. Yeah. I've had those coming at me. But when they got to me, they weren't negative. They, they, I, I wasn't actually in any fear. They just basically led me to another doorway. And I've been in a hall. Um, this, this, there was these big pillars and these steps and all these different weird looking creatures coming in and out of this, this building. And as I went in this building, there was a, a being on the side looked up and smiled at me and just carried on going, just like if you were passing somebody walking up the steps somewhere. And I went down into this building, and there's it's just like a continuous hallway. To start with, there were just doors all the way down on both sides. And I was like, well, I don't want to go through these doors because I don't know what's on the other side. And as soon as I thought that, I, I started seeing that I was creating windows next to these doors so I could look through these windows to see what was inside. And then I could pick the room that I went into. Um, I've seen people that I've known who have died and passed on. Hold and on, hold on, stop, stop, stop. Okay, go back to the... Go back to the uh, to the hallway where you're seeing the doors and the windows. What what happened? Don't don't you cut it. Don't cut that one short. <laughs> it sounded interesting. Um, okay, something interesting. Okay. It sounded interesting. Um, okay, something interesting. Where um one of these journeys that I went into, I was. No, no, no. Go back to. Go back no, to it is, it is, it is. It's me walking through one of these doorways oh, okay. into one of these rooms. Okay. okay. Well. And and the journey that I took in there, I was almost like a shamanic journey. Um, I 
I took on the form of all the prey and all the predators. So like a hawk flying would see a mouse running on the on the ground. I would be the mouse to start with, running for my life or whatever, knowing all of the sensations of what it is to be that mouse, and then have this bird of prey come down, grab that mouse and eat it. And when it, once it ate it, I became part, I was seeing through the eyes of that eagle as we were flying. And then I was, then I went down somewhere else and I was attacked by a bigger cat that took the bird. So I became the cat, you know, it was like a, a, a I don't know what you call them, they're white cats, big giant cougar thingy cats. And then I went from that into a bear. Um, and then from a bear, I went into a man. And then from a man, I went back into a rodent. You know, there was this whole circle of life. Reincarnation showed up. It, it showed me different lives that I've lived. Um, you know, it, it was all, each of these rooms brought a different element to the visitations. So, and how, it how many was, of the rooms did you go in during that experience? Oh, I don't know. I can't. I can't tell you. I just know that each time I went out of my body, I, I found myself in this hallway, and I could accept going into one of these rooms, or I could go somewhere totally different. I could go back outside of this building and interact with some of these different beings. Okay, well, uh, it sounds like you've had some pretty interesting out-of-body experiences that are equal, if not greater, than your experiences in your body. Most of the experiences I've had out-of-body, you know, whether you want to call it, um, there are differences between astral projection, remote, you know, remote viewing, um, out of body, near death experiences, and ritual out of body experiences. Most it, most come down to, for me. It comes down to the way we leave our body, the way we step out into the other dimension. But once we're in that dimension, it's just it's you know the access is the same. We we have a goal in our mind somewhere in our mind. We have a goal of where we're going to go. We pick up on that frequency, we tune in, and that's where we end up going. So how many levels of reality do you think you've visited, relatively speaking, if you had to count them and guess how many different levels you've been on? You've been on the Earth plane, you've been on the, probably you've been on the astral plane. Where Have you gone like beyond the astral plane and what's out there and what have you experienced beyond the astral plane? Yeah, I have. I have. One day um, I was being called and I said, okay, I'm ready. And then before I knew it, I was leaving the planet. Uh, uh, Shooting up like I do. One of of the forms of me leaving my physical is shooting straight up so fast. There's no breath. And by the time I get to a certain either drop at a really high rate and then just pick it up before I hit the bottom or I carry on going out there. I get to a certain point out there and then it feels like I get picked up. I get picked up. I I don't know whether I'm being picked up on a ship or another entity comes in, but one of the last ones I had was it took me outside of the earth. It took me outside of the universe. There was this noise that came in and it was like a really heavy, dense, metallic sound. And in the distance, it looked like a whole lot of stars. And as I got closer to it, these stars became ships. And the closer I got to these ships and the sound, I got to see this massive as metal wall being built around what what I deemed my universe at that particular time. We're going back 10 years now. Um and so then all of a sudden I started hearing in this 3D reality, there are all these YouTubes and videos coming back with these sounds that people were hearing all over the earth, big grinding sounds and noises they were hearing. That was very similar to what I heard when I went off planet. Um, I've been on ships. Uh, I've been into 
I, I wanted to call it other planets, but I'm not 100% sure. But because I usually end up landing in a landing bay. I know this sounds crazy, but <laughs> that's just how it is. It was a landing bay. Um, I had to go through some procedures, one layer, and then you get to see a little bit of another layer, and then you get to see people, and it was like a big military force. I got to speak to this woman who was dressed in almost in a crimsony colour. Um, she showed me the food that they ate, and then I left. I don't know if I've been back. I've seen um, pygmy people. They're like little people with short haircuts, their brown skin. They had a cliff lip, uh, and that was to do with all the ones that had a cliff lip were under a control of a more, um, what do you call it, uh, almost AI or AI robotic metallic creature that appeared like a moth, okay, on these people's faces. A proboscis went up here into their forehead and their ass end went into their mouth. And the pressure of the two would pull the lip up. And you could tell because the, the wings would push up against the eyes. And so, and, and I, I somehow worked with that species of people releasing these moths from their faces. And all of the little moths were put into a container they themselves morphed into a bigger moth and when it when they broke out when it broke out it took off but the people that had the beings that were there that had released this moth from them went back to the time that they had first been attached with these devices they've taken me to some absolutely off world crazy scenarios and situations and you, yeah yeah. Well, okay. So, <laughs> so uh, it sounds like you're tending to go somewhere where it's um, relatively here or not terribly beyond this level, maybe to the astral plane or the etheric or one of the planes that's, you know, f relatively close to this one. Have you ever gone um, either? much higher or much lower, okay. you're further with, away from this level? When it comes to the splinter cells, we started talking about this earlier on, when it comes to the ways that they splinter us into these different cells, these different cells, this is my experiences, these different cells I've experienced, I have been attached to different versions of myself on different universes, par parallel universes, timelines i've got to meet myself on this reality as well as other realities i've got to see myself in different forms uh i got to see that it doesn't matter the skin you're in it doesn't matter the gender you think you're in you have both male and female aspects to you because of the different incarnations that we've had i I don't know the different levels they've taken me to. I've had angelics come in um, and tell me that you, our DNA came from them originally and the human being that of the DNA of the angels and other beings at that particular time. And the anger came from those not wanting to be slaves anymore were accepting the new man, the new human. And then you had those that were saying, no, we didn't want that to take place. And so there was a war and the war was a deliberate war. It was to capture the souls and put them into the vessels being created down here on earth as humans. And we had the abilities, we were gifted the abilities to be able to Di access these different dimensions that they were not able to access. And so I honestly, I don't know where I am half the time. I just enjoy every single aspect that shows itself. <laughs> so you mentioned uh, another uh, member of your zoo, the angel. So why don't you yep. go there? 
Uh, I was never one. I was because of what went on in my early days in the religious side of it. I wasn't one to believe in angels and demons. I just, I just, it just was all rubbish to me. Um, I've seen Jesus like two or three times now in my lifetime, and and when he's shown up, I would say possibly one he was genuine, but the others that showed up. He was being used as an imprint, um, you know, from my memory, from memory of programs as a child. So when I started seeing these angels and things, uh, it was brought on by grief. It was brought on by programming. I have seen beings come in flying towards me one time and they were had like muddy brown wings and there was a guardian who defended me against them. And I'm like, well, is that angels coming in to see me? I don't know. Uh, I had another encounter with an angel who took up the whole space of the ceiling. The ceiling dissipated. It just dematerialized. And I could make out the shape of this being who was basically the size of the universe who came down into a smaller size where I was standing on his hand and the next minute I'm standing face to face talking to him at, he came down to my level. So there was that one. And that was when I was going into some dark areas, I was always being pulled out of these dark areas by this entity. Then I have the other angelics that have come in and said, well, hold on, hold on, stop, stop, go back. Back up. <laughs> tell tell the story you you glossed over just now. You kind of you kind of said it, but you really didn't say it. So tell which the, one? Tell the darker angel or the brown well, angels? Well, what whichever both of them, whatever whatever you don't gloss over any experiences. Go go through each one fully as if you okay. were. Okay. My my understanding of the, the angelic beings these days is that we all have a certain amount of the DNA within us, okay? And we can, through that DNA, access the dimensions that that angelic realm could access at that particular time. So when I'm seeing A, B, and C different types of or species of what we label angelic, um that's where that comes from so it's you know you've got here on earth we've got different species of humans in the angelic realm they had different species of angelics that went and did different jobs and we are still able to access all of their splinter selves because of what we have within ourselves does that make sense sure but you're you're talking about things that you've learned from your experiences. You're not actually going through the experiences. So I'd rather, I think my audience, even though they can learn from your overall understanding, they also want to hear the actual experience itself. If Okay. You, so we, we want to hear, we want the good stuff. <laughs> 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 okay. Um, well, basically, some of the ghost entities that have come in, I could easily put down into the category as the angelics that have come in. Um, it, de it depends on your definition of what an angelic is, which will bring out the um, scenario to fruition. Um, I was playing with a Ouija board and a seance and stuff because I was able to communicate with other beings they would come in and talk to me and I would I was careful how I spoke to people about the experiences because anybody who didn't know me would think I was crazy if they hadn't experienced it you know if they hadn't seen me do stuff um, and have stuff manifest in front of them and so I was at a stage where angelic to me was basically being able to get through an encounter with a being who could communicate with me and, and we could 
communicate with those around us. So you wanting me to share an encounter, okay. Um, one of my, I told you the last one I had, it was a, a, a voice entity that came in and said to me that we are DNA of the angelic realm. Yes, and, you, did, you did go over it. I, I apologize. So yeah. you, you actually mentioned the experience, and I I, I guess my mind just didn't uh, realize that that was an angelic experience. Uh, you gave the understanding that he it gave you, uh, and to me, I, I looked at that as a piece of information as opposed to an experience, and I, the, I kind of parsed it off without really – yeah that that's the that's one of the things we get we downloading inloading so much information we are receivers and filters of so much information because we're multi-dimensional all the time we'll resonate with what is closest to what's going on in our active lives right now but it doesn't mean that there's not that information in there for next experience that we're going to encounter we will be triggered by either numbers colors frequencies environments all of the sort of stuff around us uh, i could go as far as saying when i when the trees and the nature communicates to me in the old days somebody would have said that's quite angelic that's a gift that you've got there while others would say well communicating with anything outside of yourself and god is demonic so when it comes down to what you communicate with it's a perspective is it doing you harm is it doing your environment harm are you taking positive information away with you from it what are you doing with this information to me that's angelic All right it doesn't matter what the being is if i know that I am a splinter self of anything that I could be on this planet. If you look at our DNA, you will find that we have markers to just about everything on this planet. Animal, mineral, vegetable, you know, you name it, we have something of it within ourselves. We also have other markers within ourselves that we, we don't use. They say we only use 10% of our brain. I don't believe that for one bit. You know, our skin, our body that we're in, is a vessel, it's organic, it's a filter, it's taking in information all the time. How much of that information are you receiving to the point where you can communicate it? All right, so when I when I talk about the angelics coming in, I have messages that are written in clouds. They will write words that we know as our alphabet, which we can communicate with. These are, I can't tell you a hundred percent what they are where they come from what their names are what they're doing here <laughs> but i can just relay the encounters that i've had with them and if i feel a negative presence I, i'll say so you gotta gotta set boundaries and protocols for yourselves behavior you gotta put keep yourself protected if somebody says they're going to pray for you what are they praying for you clear intent this is so massive. It's not just one thing over another thing. There are so many dimensions that we're accessing all the time. So, um, um, we've gone over quite a few things. What, um, what experiences have you had? that you haven't spoken of yet that you think the audience would enjoy hearing that you know i understand you wanted anybody wants to pass information that is an overall understanding that they've gained from all these experiences but uh at the same time we want to hear the experiences and you've gone through quite a bit quite a few uh is there any other experiences that you think that people would want to hear that you haven't uh, gone through that would that would be okay. you think they would find interesting okay um back in the 80s about 83 84 i was uh, in a holden 
going back from Marble Bar, going to a little township called Muliala, uh, up in uh, Western Australia. And not far from there, I would later discover that there was a uh, underground military secret Chinese military base. Whew. Anyway, we were driving back home one evening and um, there was this big light behind us coming in. And my mother had said to me, look at, you know, look at that. And it looked like a fireball coming straight at us from the rear vision mirror from the back. I had a um, tape deck, an old fashioned, you know, like boom box thing. I was a teenager in the back window and it had a cassette in there. And this thing came flying over the top of the roof and we saw it in front of the car and then everything went blank. Everything went blank. Um, when we came to, it was a man banging on the window of the passenger, my window, passenger side, and managed to get in and get us out. I had, uh, I was sunburnt all around. I was like, you know, I had, we, we wore sunglasses because we lived in the hottest place in Australia at the time. And so everything was sunglasses and hats and stuff. And got out, we were sunburnt. Uh, the car, some parts of the motor had melted. It had to be towed back to the village that we were at. And the cassette player in the back window was so melted that you could not take the cassette out of it. You had to smash it open to get the cassette out, and that was buckled, okay? So once we got back to the village, we found we discovered that an hour had gone by, and so we had missing time. And what we had seen had been seen on the far side of Australia, uh, Victoria, Melbourne, that you know, right across the other side of Australia. And whatever it had been turned around and came back and crashed in the hills near the village where I was living. In that time, we had the military came in, the Australian military moved into the little village of Muliala, and everybody was questioned. We had people suddenly go missing. We had a, a flash flood that came out of nowhere in the middle of summer and wipe a person downstream. They, they were found in their vehicle with sand right up to here. They passed on. Um, there were a lot of things. Some people went missing. I was escorted out of the village, put on to a plane, and sent back here to New Zealand. So I missed what happened. But when I went back a year later, the military had moved into Marble Bar and set up camp there. And, um, yeah, there were, there are were a lot of things. We, I went walking to discover where this thing came down and crashed. We were told that it was Spotnik coming down crashing. We were told that it was a meteorite. We, by the time we got back to the township, you know, the little village, we'd heard on the radio that, whatever it was had been seen turned around and it was coming back towards where it had come from and people were questioning what it was there was definitely no asteroid it was not a piece of space junk coming down this had a mind of its own it moved over top of us and it went to one side of the country and it came back when we went out to this place, it was known as the Twins. There was two rocks, and at the bottom of it, there was this hole, and it was like a pool, a private pool you could swim in. And the locals, the local land people, the natives of the area, had said that there was a lot of um, tradition there, and, star, and that was the location of star people, and there were some carvings in the rock. When you're a teenager, you don't, you don't, ask questions, you don't take in too much of that information, but I recall it very clearly now. Um, not long after that, that's when they shipped me out. Uh, everybody had to be questioned. Uh, not long after that, the house 
got hit by a tornado that ripped through. It was one of the strongest ones in Western Australia. Came across from Port Hedland right through the middle of our little township, completely annihilated it. So there is, uh, over a period of time, we got to see people disappear from this encounter. We got, the military came in and hushed people up. Um, I got sent back here. <laughs> there were all sorts of weird things that revealed themselves. The biggest thing of all that revealed itself was the secret military deep underground base. I later discovered that um, it was also connected to Pine Gap and other deep, other dumps in that local area. So what what year was this that this happened? This is going back 83, 84, Western Australia. And is there a name for this event that you've ever heard no. of? I, I can't I can't remember it so long ago and stuff and you know I moved on since then, but so I'm sure you like should a, be able to like find something. It looked it like a fireball. It like did. To to me at that age, it looked like a fireball coming in, a controlled fireball, and it just went over the top. I mean, you got to remember we're out in the desert. There's no houses or nothing around. It's just desert. So. So okay, uh, let me recap it for a second and ask you a question based on what you said you you had a fireball or something looked like a fireball come over you uh, as after it, as it came over you lost um you lost your awareness your consciousness you found oh, yeah. yourself, you found yourself waking up where you'd been laying in the sun and up no 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 we were still inside the vehicle Okay, uh, whatever well, I it was. That I understand. I understand you're yeah. still inside the vehicle, but you ended up waking up in the vehicle in such a manner where you either got sunburned or it burned you when it came over. One of those two. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so um, it ended up, you're saying it ended up crashing. Yeah. Okay. So do you have any idea why it crashed? I wouldn't have a clue. I, I was only a teenager at the time. I, I wouldn't have a clue, but that was when that happened. That's when the UFO side of things really peaked for me. I started paying the skies more attention. Um, and by doing that, these other beings that were in, in my life at that stage were also showing up more solidified than beforehand. So uh, I'm going to go back to a question I asked before and try it again. So uh, you, I asked you uh, towards the end, the beginning of this interview, what, um, what's the hierarchy of, of all the, you know, how do you fit everything together where, you know, these, um, you kind of, you have a zoo. And in the zoo, you have all these different levels of beings, and they represent different levels of reality and different uh, dimensions and different places. And um, let's let's go to one piece, and we'll see how it how it all fits. Uh, the, uh, let me ask it from a slightly different angle. Instead of saying what's the overall hierarchy, let's go with who controls the planet. So, who do you think is the highest level of control? It can't be the Satanists. Uh, it can't no. be the, can't be the dark yeah. force. Dark forces they call in. Who? But it could be any number of things or competitors or whatever. But um, when I asked, I asked different people this question, and I get different answers from different people. So, what do you think is happening here in reference to, you know, like you you think of the U.S. government, and they think they're in control. They're obviously not anywhere near at the top of the food chain. So how does how does this pyramid-shaped food chain play out? Who's at the top? Who's in the middle? And how does it, how do you see it? The the uh, overall control of Earth or the competing factions or whatever. How do you see it all? How do you fit all the pieces together other than saying other than getting to each area and going, well, these guys over here do this and these guys over here do that. 
is there have you ever uh, succeeded in uh, fitting the pieces together about what's happening? Okay. Here, here on Earth. Okay. Just, well, f for me, it started with. Who do I who do I reach out to for help? You know, um, I was told that what I went through was I needed help for, and I didn't know what the problem was. So I went and I ended up going to a counsellor, and through that that journey, that process, I realised that the governments uh, are connected to medical, military, the whole, anything that's connected to the government is not going, is not working and has not worked in the betterment of me personally, my health, my wellness or anything. It's, if anything, it's hindered it, it's made it worse and I've had to, it's taken me longer to recover from interacting with the government than it has from any of the beings that I've interacted but in saying that, because I have seen the different levels, different sorts of parasitical entities and how they've reacted when they haven't got their quota, um, it's almost like they're in a panic form, like something, they're, they're under the control of some other being. Uh, when I've been to church meetings and other gatherings, I have seen the hierarchies go there as well. And you can see when somebody... In the old days, it would be known as possessed. But when somebody has a darker form of um, parasitical entity directing, controlling and talking to them because they have a contract with them to harvest X amount of energy from the people around them, whether it's through um, one form of manipulation or another, okay, they have their hierarchies as well. So the greys, they have different forms of hierarchy as well. But you've got, there are different beings that work with each other on these multidimensional levels. Some can go in, some beings can go into these other dimensions like we can. Um, and there is a lot of gates that have been opening up recently where these dimensional beings have had easier access the uh, our awareness to what is going on has opened for us and we're able to explore it more so we're going out there further and we're seeing that we are capable of so much more and we are doing so much more um, when it comes down to the hierarchy of in the practices when you've got the rituals and things there's 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 a ritual to it there's a ceremony to it there's there's the hierarchy in that. There's the hierarchy in the Masonic order. Who's achieved what, where? Well, to me, from where I've what I've seen and encountered, all of that to me is just a crock of bleh. Because at the end of the day, they are just as much victims and being harvested as we are. They are in a false sense of security and reality thinking they're going to get something more whether it's uh, a longer existence here in this dimension doing what they're doing they're not protecting themselves they're not protecting anybody else if because of i i call the government a bunch of farmers all right they are farming us as the herd on this planet we are we generate a certain amount of lush chemicals reactions dimensional accesses for all these different other beings to come in and these different beings have a share in us now, this might sound really harsh and crazy and stuff but this is how i see it when you become aware of what these entities are doing and how they attach themselves to you and and the traumas that they can create in you you can turn around and tell them, no, I know who I am. You don't have that access any longer. But in saying that, I still have experiences where I encounter new beings or new forces, stronger forces, stronger energies. They come in and test my barriers, test my boundaries. And as soon as I'm able to recognize these influences, 
I then, according to all the other encounters I've had, will tap into the toolbox of these experiences that I've had to be able to deal with it. I, I haven't come across any race or culture or, or being that doesn't have some form of hierarchy. And, you know, as much as this planet is absolutely beautiful and it has some beautiful time spaces in it, it we are being farmed. I've watched the ships go over, over top with cargo. I know that they've had cargo. And I've pointed it out. I was at a party one day and I pointed it out to people. Can you guys see that? It's not, wow, look at that. It's, can you see that? Because some people are not in that frequency to be able to see it. All right, this is when we get used. If you can't see it, you can't do something about it. You can't change what the outcome's going to be. When you do see it and recognize it, you have to become accountable for the knowledge and information that you've got. And we're always re-establishing the information that we that's coming into us. Today, I'm aware of what I'm aware of. Tomorrow, I might actually find that I am of a certain hierarchy and how am I going to deal with that on the population around me. I don't believe that those that are looking after this planet are in our best interest. If they didn't want us here, they could push the button. But as they are having us here, they are polluting us. They're slowing us down. They're dumbing us down. I don't see it as a good hierarchy. So, so uh, how big a percentage of the human race has attaching spirits? Everybody. Everybody, okay. And um, can they be removed? Yes. And have you ever had the experience of removing them from others? Yes. <laughs> okay, so can you go beyond the single word and actually uh, give us one of those experiences where you, you know, you mentioned, uh, I've heard you mention before on other shows about the one fellow in the, in the sauna, but um, I want to hear about a removal. All right. Okay. In the early days, in my teen days, I was about 17 and I was doing a reading for a lady and she brought her daughter along. And at that stage, I, I, I wasn't where I'm at now. I still was delicate with the information that came in because I, could, I had already seen what it was capable of doing. Um, I played with tarot cards, I played with bones, all sorts of stuff back then because that's where I'd come from. That's the practices I was raised in. And it was just normal magic to me. It was just normal, everyday, my abilities. And this woman came along and I did a reading for her and a few weeks later she comes back and she's in hysterics and she's accusing me of this and that and everything else. And, and I blamed myself. I stopped practicing using my abilities because... I didn't want to be the cause of somebody else losing family members, you know, somebody dying. You know, I tell the truth. I tell what comes to me. And so I felt I felt a form of guilt. OK, then I saw her again and it was she she had attachments. I, I, I was like I saw these attachments originally, but they didn't register with me. And later on down the process, when I saw her and her daughter, daughter was a lot older by that stage, uh, I, I saw the process and I saw that these entities were still with her. We got to sit down and have a cup of coffee and stuff and she got to express to me what took place after the reading that I had done. So we shared each other's encounters. Um, after the fact, I said to her, do you realize that you have an attachment on you? And she said she knew that there was something there, uh, just little things that would happen, voices that she would hear, things would get moved around. She knew she'd put things in certain places and come back and found that they had definitely been moved. There were a lot of little telltale signs to her that there were other influences going on. Other family members would come and they would be full of chaos, you know, chaotically f fueled is, you know, basically what it was. So when she was around certain people, 
uh, the frequencies that were being admitted would cause more chaos, more trauma, more arguments, anger, you know. And then when she'd come away from it, that would stop. She blamed herself for a long time. But when I turned around and said to her, no, well, you've actually got an attachment attached to you. And this is where I can see it. it was attached to the back of her neck, feeding off her, directing her every moves. She could hear the voices through her neck. She could feel it through the vibrations. She also had a pulling in her stomach all the time. When these ones, when this voice would come up, she'd get this uh, 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 sort of gut feeling. They show their symptoms in different ways. Some will attach to the stomach. Some will attach to different joints of the body and this sort of this sort of thing. Um, you could go and get tested for having a bad elbow or or having um. Um, oh, I forgot what you call it when you both your hands go out. Um, carpal tunnel syndrome or something, RSI, uh, all of these things. And they're not, it's not actually a physical disorder that you're going through. It's an attachment that's leached into those locations it's that, that you've been attached to. Um, if you can imagine, like in what is it, the Matrix, and Neo's got all those tubes being pulled out of him all over him, and then afterwards he's got all these holes in his body. That that's pretty much how these attachments work. If you can get rid of these attachments, and it's basically saying, "I see you. You can leave now. You're not needed or even wanted here. No more permission." They'll leave, but then you've got to heal that area, that location, because it's like a beacon to something, another entity out there who needs to attach itself. If well, yeah, attaching spirits. I asked you uh, to hear about a one to remove, uh, a removal, and you were telling about a lady who had a bunch of them, and you were informing her, and and that's about yeah. where you left off. The, the first thing about um, attachment removal is acknowledgement that there is the possibility that there are other entities around you. Um, you can't use it as an excuse for things that happen in your life that go on in your life. But if there are full on telltale signs that you're being messed with, and there are so many people are being messed with left, right, center. If you've got any connection to do with smart meters or anything, you you're definitely going to be messed with. Um, the farmers have, when I say farmers, I'm talking about government agencies, okay? And it goes deeper than government agencies. Um, they they have mimicked all the senses that we have and so that they can gain all the information they can about the different dimensions we go into. Because each of the dimensions use and tap into one of the senses that we have here in this physical. So when we're, and that's how they get access to it. So at the moment, I mean, when I was 10 years old, I, I was seven, eight actually, I had this premonition vision, whatever you want to call it, um, of people in hazmat suits. We call them PE hazmat suits now. And they were completely covered and they had these goggles on, they had the headphones on, all the kids were in a high rise building, people lived in high rise buildings, there was no cars around, all sorts of stuff. And very recently I got to see that with everything that's happened over the last few years, that's been very in the forefront of my mind. Now seeing these virtual reality goggles and stuff and knowing that when the, the mind can have a thought, but the body doesn't know that it's a thought. It thinks it's a physical. So if you are going into any of the programs, if you've been programmed and you're trying to deprogram and stuff, you'll realize that when you go to a counselor and they ask you to relive, relive, relive your traumatic event, and you do that, they gather the data, and then you go away and you're still reliving it for a whole week or however long, and it doesn't dissipate, okay, because you haven't worked with what the fears are, what where that pain is coming from. Somebody's told you that what you've gone through is not right, it's painful, da-da-da, this is where the terror comes from. So you've got to analyse the fear, which is false evidence appearing real. You get into communication with your emotions, your senses, 
you know what chemicals you're releasing. When you see the bigger picture and you see that every single way you turn, the water, the air, the earth, the food, our basic necessities, they're being met with toxicity. So when you can break out of that and then you see, well, that's not good for me, and you see the resistance that's out there to stop you from doing good for yourself and healing yourself, and you see that they want it. It's to me the only way I survived all the stuff that I went through was knowing that one, I was a targeted individual, and it didn't matter what they did, whether they walked the dogs down the road, whether they spied on me in the cab, whether they tapped my phones, whether they came into the house. I was not just seeing them, I was seeing the entities that were involved in this whole procedure. And these people playing these roles are also aware of the entities involved in these procedures. You know, they live, that's my reality. <laughs> uh, there's so, so many so, levels. So, uh, okay, it. so, so it, do you believe that um, the world is controlled by disincarnate attaching spirits? There is no other terminology that fits it better. So you're saying yes? Yes, I am. I am saying yes, yes. This planet is not ours and we are controlled. We we are penned, we are farmed, we are harvested. You know, free will. What is free will when you live in a box that you pay a mortgage for? Or you've got to go to your local supermarket to get your shopping because you can't grow your seed. You're not free. You're not free. There's no free will. You know, um, Free will comes down to the way you look after the vessel, the temple that you are in, that you are residing in. All right. Well, um, I think we've gone over most everything. I'm sure there's a lot more you could say about your experiences. It sounds like you've probably got uh, far more than you've told here. Uh, if you're ever wanting to come back and go over others that you haven't uh, gone over so far, you're always welcome to come back. Um, what, uh, go ahead and promote yourself, whatever you wish to um, sell or, you know, I, I have mentioned your website and I'll put that in the links below, your, below the biography, below the, this, um, recording once I put it on YouTube, but if there's anything that you want to say that that uh, basically to, to, uh, toots your horn or pulls people to you that you feel that you deserve to help um, or you should help, and uh, why don't you go ahead and say anything you want to okay. say. Well, I have a web page. It's stonehobbit.com. Um, and it's got it's it's got a lot of different categories in there. It's a work in progress. There's always something going on there, something that's you know updated regularly. Um, I have a a Zoom meeting once a week, my Thursday, your Wednesday, um, because I don't know what time zone you're in. I can't tell you. <laughs> You'll have to get in touch with me. My email is stonehobbit two at gmail.com you can find me on facebook with a little detective work you know if you if you want me you'll find me um so you're not the first a lot of videos you're I, not I the first stone hobbit you're the second one. Oh no no i i am but you know stone hobbit one you know she was pretty radical you know nobody really could keep up with her information so she got banned <laughs> so she had to come back again you know <laughs> <laughs> There's a Stone Hobbit three out there for when Stone Hobbit two gets banned. You know, we'll get there. You know, <laughs> you got to think ahead these days. Go ahead. <laughs> um, I can be found 
most places. I've been doing talks and stuff uh, for the last, what, 10, 15 years or so. Started out on just, just as a guest in a chat room, uh, learning the languages, learning to be more comfortable in the skin I'm in. Um, I've done run a couple of courses uh, through Lightnet and other other areas. I do one on one. I don't charge for anything. Uh, if you feel like you know I'm worth something to you and you're able to do a donation, much appreciated. I have a PayPal. I have a few books coming out. I plan for the 20th of September, but this life goes on. You know, life goes on. Might be a little bit later than that, but I have a trilogy of over 150 chapters. Each chapter is an experience or an encounter I've had with different beings. And basically what I do through these chapters are I show how what the commonalities are from each of the experiences. And then you get to see, it builds a bigger picture of how these entities interact with one another from the light energy that they can use to the ships that they come in, um, to the frequencies, the smells, the sensations. I've had several different witnesses from family members. Uh, I had regular hangouts where people would come to my place. I used to do readings. The whole, the whole caboodle, mate, the whole caboodle. I'm a freak of nature and I love it. Um, I class myself at this point in time, and everything is forever changing. But so far, I'm a walk-in. I know that I'm genetically um, hybrid, that I've had proved reincarnation to myself and others around me. I've proved in parallel universes and worlds. I've met others with my name, my birth date, working in the same locations I've worked at who have also had paranormal experiences. Every, every All my chapters are categorised by the homes that I've lived in, the properties I've lived on, because each, each has always been active. People have asked me in the past, is it the house that I live in? Um, and I have to say, because I've experienced something everywhere I've ever been, even if it's just an overnight stay somewhere, I have to say it's through me. So I came down to being a communicator. I used to see myself as a victim um, because that was me in stuck state, limited stuck states of other people's belief systems. And then when I stepped into myself, I became inner aware. I became aware of my self identity, giving myself appreciation. So I have another set of uh, books coming out about self-reflection, self-awareness, uh, getting in touch with your higher being, your most authentic version of who you are, which allows you to further see that you're being communicated with. So my half-fire hangout is a Zoom call. It's free. It's every your Wednesday. I will send you a link that you can post for people to come in and chat anytime. Um, yeah, what else can I say? Okay, that's, that's, that's good enough. <laughs> Keep on tracking. So, that's fine. Uh, so, let's go ahead and end this. And uh, if you ever want to come back, just let me know. Here we go. Uh, 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 yeah. Is there anything else you want to say before we get off there? I, I'm most, I'm happy to come back and chat anytime. It doesn't matter how deep you want to go. Um, I didn't cover too much of the MK Ultra stuff, the darker side of it, or the targeted individual. That all played a huge role in my awareness to everything that was going on around me. I know that they know that I'm in communication, and I've seen what they've done to try to manipulate emotional states. And just, we have power over them once we are in awareness. All right. Uh, it's been a pleasure. I'll look forward to having you again if you want to get further into those areas. And here we go. We're stopping now. Oh.